Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Saturday, July 6th, 2024. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's Word today, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. Our psalm for today is Psalm 122. Psalm 122, the Song of Ascents of David. I rejoiced with those who said to me, let's go to the house of the Lord. Our feet were standing within your gates, Jerusalem. Jerusalem built as a city should be, solidly united, where the tribes, the Lord's tribes, go up to give thanks to the name of the Lord. This is an ordinance for Israel. There, thrones for judgment are placed, thrones of the house of David. Pray for the well-being of Jerusalem. May those who love you be secure. May there be peace within your walls, security within your fortresses. Because of my brothers and sisters, I will say, may peace be in you. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will pursue your prosperity. Joshua knows that he will die soon. And so as he bids farewell to the people of Israel, whom he had led in the conquest of the promised land, um, Joshua reviews the history of the people of Israel and encourages them to remain faithful to the Lord. Joshua assembled all the tribes of Israel at Shechem, and summoned Israel's elders, leaders, judges, and officers, and they presented themselves before God. Joshua said to all the people, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Long ago, your ancestors, including Terah, the father of Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates River and worshipped other gods. But I took your father Abraham from the region beyond the Euphrates River, led him throughout the land of Canaan, and multiplied his descendants. I gave him Isaac, and to Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. I gave the hill country of Seir to Esau as a possession. Jacob and his sons, however, went down to Egypt. I sent Moses and Aaron, and I defeated Egypt by what I did within it, and afterward I brought you out. When I brought your ancestors out of Egypt and you reached the Red Sea, the Egyptians pursued your ancestors with chariots and horsemen as far as the sea. Your ancestors cried out to the Lord, so he put darkness between you and the Egyptians and brought the sea over them, engulfing them. Your own eyes saw what I did to Egypt. After that, you lived in the wilderness a long time. Later, I brought you to the land of the Amorites who lived beyond the Jordan. They fought against you, but I handed them over to you. You possessed their land, and I annihilated them before you. Balak, son of Zippor, king of Moab, set out to fight against Israel. He sent for Balaam, son of Beor, to curse you, but I would not listen to Balaam. Instead, he repeatedly blessed you, and I rescued you from him. You then crossed the Jordan and came to Jericho. Jericho's citizens, as well as the Amorites, Perizzites, Canaanites, Hethites, Girgashites, Hivites, and Jebusites fought against you, but I handed them over to you. I sent hornets ahead of you, and they drove out the two Amorite kings before you. It was not by your sword or bow. I gave you a land you did not labor for, and cities you did not build, though you live in them. You are eating from vineyards and olive groves you did not plant. Therefore, fear the Lord and worship him in sincerity and truth. Get rid of the gods your ancestors worshipped beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt, and worship the Lord. But if it doesn't please you to worship the Lord, choose for yourselves today. Which will you worship? The gods your ancestors worshipped beyond the Euphrates River? or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. As for me and my family, we will worship the Lord. People replied, 
We will certainly not abandon the Lord to worship other gods. For the Lord our God brought us and our ancestors out of the land of Egypt, out of the place of slavery, and performed these great signs before our eyes. He also protected us all along the way we went, and among all the peoples whose lands we traveled through. The Lord drove out before us all the peoples, including the Amorites who lived in the land. We too will worship the Lord, because he is our God. But Joshua told the people, you will not be able to worship the Lord, because he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions and sins. If you abandon the Lord and worship foreign gods, he will turn against you, harm you, and completely destroy you after he has been good to you. No, the people answered Joshua, we will worship the Lord. Joshua then told the people, you are witnesses against yourselves that you yourselves have chosen to worship the Lord. We are witnesses, they said. Then get rid of the foreign gods that are among you and turn your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. So the people said to Joshua, we will worship the Lord our God and obey him. On that day, Joshua made a covenant for the people at Shechem and established a statute and ordinance for them. Joshua recorded these things in the book of the law of God. He also took a large stone and set it up there under the oak at the sanctuary of the Lord. And Joshua said to all the people, You see this stone. It will be a witness against us, for it has heard all the words the Lord said to us. And it will be a witness against you, so that you will not deny your God. Then Joshua sent the people away, each to his own inheritance. After these things, the Lord's servant, Joshua, son of Nun, died at the age of 110. They buried him in his allotted territory at Simnath Sarah, in the hill country of Ephraim, north of Mount Gaash. Israel worshipped the Lord throughout Joshua's lifetime and during the lifetimes of the elders who outlived Joshua and who had experienced all the works the Lord had done for Israel. Joseph's bones, which the Israelites had brought up from Egypt, were buried at Shechem in the parcel of land Jacob had purchased from the sons of Hamor, Shechem's father or a hundred pieces of silver. It was an inheritance for Joseph's descendants. And Eliezer, son of Aaron, died, and they buried him at Gibeah, which had been given to his son Phinehas in the hill country of Ephraim. Saul is now back in uh, Jerusalem and then has gone back to the church in Antioch. And the church in Antioch is going to set Paul and Barnabas apart to go on a missionary journey. This is going to be the first of several missionary journeys that Paul is going to conduct uh, through his ministry, and which we'll read about as we continue going on through the book of Acts. And so today we be hear the beginning of Paul's first missionary journey. Now in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Menaen, close friend of Herod Tetrarch, and Saul. As they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then after they had fasted, prayed, and laid hands on them, they sent them off. So being set out by the Holy Spirit, sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. Arriving in Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God in the Jewish synagogues. They also had John as their assistant. When they had traveled the whole island as far as Paphos, they came across a sorcerer, a Jewish false prophet named Bar-Jesus. He was with the proconsul, Sergius Paulus, an intelligent man. This man summoned Barnabas and Saul and wanted to hear the word of God. But Elymas the sorcerer, that is the meaning of his name, opposed them and tried to turn the proconsul away from the faith. But Saul, 
also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, stared straight at Elymas and said, You are full of all kinds of deceit and trickery, you son of the devil and enemy of all that is right. Won't you ever stop perverting the straight paths of the Lord? Now look, the Lord's hand is against you. You are going to be blind and I will, and will not see the sun for a time. Immediately a mist and darkness fell on him, and he went around seeking someone to lead him by the hand. Then when he saw what happened, the proconsul believed because he was astonished at the teaching of the Lord. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.